everybody's here. Today is December 4th, 2021. And the uh, Pawa fishing in Taikoura has reopened. Everybody's getting down there. Well, here we go. So I was about to go off and wade around in the shallows and have a look. Allow me to articulate as best I can my love and hate relationship with shore diving. I love shore diving because you don't have to pack a boat, you don't have to bring a boat. It's like less gear in the car, it's great. Less gear. I hate shore diving because of the acrobatics involved. I mean, look at this. You've got to navigate your way, climbing over rocks, you know, like Frodo and Sam on their way to Mordor. And, and then you've got to go into the seaweed and it's thick like a swamp and you've got to kind of fall into the water because, I mean, it's, there's no like nice ramp or anything there for you. So you finally get in, you, you literally fight your way into the water. So shore diving is something that I love and something that I hate at the same time. Now sometimes when you're out there you're going to take a float like what I did here. You take a float and hang a catch bag from it uh, and then because you're taking a float with you it means you've got a float line and then look at this you get you see, constantly constantly you find yourself getting tangled in the float line ah oh, such such a nuisance so that's often why i use that little cressy uh, waist catch bag instead uh, around my waist uh, on, on this particular dive though i decided to use uh, the float so ugh, the float yeah it's a blessing and a curse at the same time just like the shore diving Anyway, the hunt for a power number one. So I hopped into the water and we're only looking in through maybe a meter and a half of water here. It was fairly shallow and then I find this empty power shell. And I'm thinking to myself, ooh, this is quite big. It's kind of like foreshadowing. So I measure the shell just to have a wee look and see how big that shell is. You see, in case you don't know, this whole area, Kaikoura, five years ago in 2016 had a massive earthquake and it wrecked the countryside you know though because it's all on a coastline there right you know you had all these landslides and it covered over the um the rocky beaches and stuff and it it, it did a lot of damage to the marine environment so a lot of those damage was done was done to the power stock so they closed the power fishery for five years and uh, this is like the first weekend where they've reopened it so it's time for everyone to dive and uh, get in the water and have a look and uh, try to find some power and oh look at that there is the first power and it's a pretty good size and every single power that I found on this dive was big usually when I dive for power I find them and then I measure it and then put the small one back and then put the small one back and then put the next small one back and then you find that a lot of them are small but this particular dive my goodness every power was huge so heading off back to the float, pull the catch bag out. It's actually a crayfish net, but I just decided I'll use that for the power today. And then in we go. One in the bag. And I wasn't the only one there, you know. You got other people diving in. See that fella there? 
he's got a float with a float line as well. Throw it all out. So that's what you do. Throw it out and you anchor your float so that you can go out and have a look. And we're continuing the search here for power number two. It was in pretty shallow water here. It was only maybe one and a half to two meters, you know, a little bit of variation there. And um, I was actually wearing my new dive watch, which I suddenly realized at this point in time that I haven't even put it into dive mode. <laughs> so, all right, have a look at the dive watch, flick it into dive mode. Not that I was even looking at the watch because I mean, why bother even wearing it? I mean, you're in a meter and a half to two meters of water. Now I had a discussion recently with another diver named Willie and uh, we were talking about how they, the power like to hang around the big stalks of kelp. So I find this huge stalk of kelp right here. And so I have a look underneath and try to find it and oh no, unfortunately there's just nothing there under that one. And then I see this crevice and I think, oh well, you know, often power are in the crevices, in the cracks. Oh, no, not there either. But I'm sure if I look and I look and I look, that they're going to be not too far away. Oh, look at that. There is one in the crevice right there. Found power number two. And wow, look at that. That is a behemoth. One enormous big power. So that's power number two in the bag. And the float line is getting hooked up on seaweed. The fruitful journey for power number three. So after finding the first two power and within probably 10 minutes of diving, I'm thinking, well, there's got to be more. And then, oh, look at this. One big group of them. And they're all big. That's what I call the big patch. Now, you can't really tell so much from the video here. But the ocean current was strong. And I was getting pushed around a lot. Left and right. Pushed around, pushed around. And after I took this one power off of this patch here, I, I could not find this patch again. Like, even though I, I was within meters of it, I looked and I looked and I looked and I could not find that same patch again. But that's okay. Look, I know that, that this whole lagoon, there's plenty of power there. It hadn't been pulled out by all the other divers yet. And they say, you know, that when you pull up power, not to take them all off of the same spot anyway. That's just good practice. So, I'm looking for that same patch, I can't find it, but we're now on to power number four. Where is power number four going to be? I said it before and I'll say it again, the current was incredibly strong here. I mean, it was only a little lagoon that I was in. But if you look at the seaweed and you look at the uh, debris in the water, this debris is essentially the um, organic matter that's in the water because it was pretty pretty murky. I mean, look at the, the stalks of kelp and the way they're moving. It was an unbelievably strong current for what is essentially a rock pool. You know, this was not even really fully exposed to the ocean. This was like really close in and it was mostly surrounded by rocks. There we go, there's the next power. And I'm having to fight this current and grab onto bits of kelp 
um, to try to stay in the same place because the current is just really, really rough. I mean, you you just can't quite grasp it unless with unless you were there. And the only way visually that I can really articulate it to you is to just look at the seaweed. Power number four in the bag. Now let's try to find mega power number five. And sometimes this water is actually shallower than you think. And the other power are shallower than you think. There we go, there's power number five right there. And wow, that's another really huge one. My goodness, look how big. You can tell that they're really, really big when you look closely at the shell and you can see that there's actually bits of seaweed growing on the top of the shell. I mean, if, if it's got its own stalks of kelp growing on the shell, um, you know that that power has been there for a while and it's been left alone and uh, you know, it's <laughs> it's a very mature power, I guess is the uh, best way to describe it. And with that, we have our daily catch limit of five. So that actually didn't take very long. Look, I've edited this down. And so you've been watching this now for about 10 minutes. Uh, it was only maybe 20 minutes in the water. And look, as I'm coming back in, there's a school of little bait fish. It was so murky, I can't even tell what type of bait fish they are. But they were there. And so, yeah, just negotiate my way past the other fella with the other catch bag and let's hop out of the water. Well, thanks to the five year power closure here in Kaikoura, my goodness, I have never seen power so big. I mean, they're not, they're not super gigantic, but they're big. Oh, crikey. All these power, they're probably about 130, 140 millimeters, maybe 150. They're all big. <laughs> oh. Whilst I was on my dive mission, Coco was on her own little rock hopping mission. And uh, she was quite happy to find some power. This is, so this is some of the video footage that she shot with her uh, little GoPro camera on her wrist. And uh, she was a wee bit disappointed because all the power that she found was the teenagers, the small ones, um, in the cracks and crevices and in the shallows, but all, they're all just the small ones. But you know, it's good to know that there are small ones there because that's the next generation. The next generation of power are there, and they are growing. And when they get bigger, they'll migrate out into the uh, deeper water. I didn't intend to actually film this entire segment in slow motion. It's just that for some reason the DJI Osmo changed into slow motion recording mode. So you enjoy this nice slow motion. And whilst I'm filming in slow motion, we found a yellow foot power. I have never found one of these before. Uh, didn't realize it was one until I pulled it off because it was sort of under a crevice, under a rock. but. You know, pull it off, have a look. Now you're not allowed to take the yellow foot, even though the power fishery has reopened, it's reopened for black foot power, but not for yellow foot. So uh, in Kaikoura, you cannot take that yellow foot. But there is my uh, crayfish bag there, and there is my one large lump of deliciousness. Five, big power. Big power from a fishery that has been left alone for five years other than the obvious poachers that are going to go in there regardless. And there are the MPI officers. There was four of them. Well, actually, we were inspected multiple times. Um, the first time we were inspected, there were four of them there waiting for us. And um, yeah, 
doing a lot of education, talking to people, making sure that people are following all of the applicable rules. And that ends the first day of two days of power diving. If you've watched this far in the video, keep watching. There's more diving ahead in the next part of the video on the second day. Morena from Lazy Shag Backpackers in Kaikoura. And uh, today we're going to head north and go to a different rocky spot. We're going to have some fun amongst the rocks and the seaweed in the Moana. Well, found a nice little secluded lagoon. Um, the water looks pretty clear and the weather looks calmer than yesterday. Let's get in and have a look. I don't really want to say exactly where the spot is, but I mean heck, I mean if you're a local you could probably look at the rocks in the background and figure it out, but this turned out to be not actually a very good spot. Got into the water and again fairly shallow, I was actually quite hopeful on this dive because the water clarity was really good, it was better than the first day, I mean it was very clear, several meters of visibility, the, the sea was calmer, the weather was calmer but it was a little bit worrying getting in the water and not seeing any power and i i had a good look around this entire lagoon area and i would have gone further if not for the fact that you know sometimes you've just got to know when to cut your losses and i'm going along here and i did not find one not even one what i did find instead was a great big kakano so I'm, I'm minding my own business, looking for the power, and I pop up, and my goodness, I know what that is. I recognize those big flippers sticking out of the water there, and I'm thinking, okay, um, 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 no, just no, no, no. <laughs> I am not game enough to invade the personal space of a wild seal and potentially get bitten, potentially get attacked, I'm going to leave him alone. And with that, we moved on to our second dive location. All right, attempt number two. Last spot, there was nothing. Just nothing. For second dive location, I did catch a couple of power here, and it didn't take too long to find the first one. But my goodness, was this an unpleasant area to dive in. I mean, thick with seaweed, very shallow water, like, uh, like a meter of water, super thick, super rocky. But here we go, here's the first power. And again, it's another big one, not as big as the ones from the first day, but it's legal. Finding more of them was tough. Uh, I'm editing out about half an hour of video footage here because I only found two. And I literally recorded like 30 minutes of video in this dreadful one meter of water with thick seaweed. Um, it's so, I mean, look at it. It's, just, it's basically a swamp. Um, you can't dive in it. You can't walk through it. I, I didn't even have my fins on here. The only way you can traverse your way through it is you lie on the surface of the water and you grab the rocks and you grab the seaweed with your hands and you pull yourself through. And then when it gets shallow enough, you stand up and then you walk out. Um, absolutely miserable, tiring, unpleasant dive not even really what to call a dive it's just in a you just in a swamp <laughs> uh. not that many in this spot Anyway, two power in the bag from the swamp dive and let's traverse our way with a 
DJI camera that's still recording when it's not supposed to be recording <laughs> and get up and out of the water and get inspected by MPI again. Anyway, finished the dive. Well, that wraps it up for um, Kaikoura Power Dive. It's um, didn't quite go how I expected. Uh, I wasn't expecting them to be that big, but they were big. Um, on the first day, I wasn't expecting them to find so many of them so easily, but I did. Um, didn't expect to see as many people as what I did, but my goodness, there's so many of them out there. Everywhere you went, every just divers, 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 floats, wetsuits, spear guns, everywhere divers, and then um, fisheries officers. I mean, I didn't film any of them, but crikey, utes, fisheries on written on them, and then the unmarked ute, you know, the grey one. I even saw the same fisheries officers twice on day two that I saw on day one. So, but I mean, hey, you definitely want them to be out there because otherwise people are just going to go in there and take, 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 take. So, um, yeah, I got educated and other people are getting educated. Um, but overall, um, pretty good dive, pretty good. And um, I've accumulated a little bit of my own local knowledge. So the next time I come up here, it's not just about knowing where to go. It's also knowing about where not to go. And it's not all about take, take, take either. It's also about accumulating that knowledge and knowing where to go for next time. Anyway, did some serious mahi. Did the serious mahi today for only two power. Just um, fighting through seaweed, just fighting my way through it. And um, yeah, not a lot of power on the second day, but uh, we got the full five power on the first day. So. Thanks for watching. Hope this video was interesting for you. Tune into the next video. Enohora.